If you are struggling with your spiritual practice, this just might be why. Hi, I'm Alice, your starseed guide and healer. Regardless of what your practice is, whether it's journaling, meditation, light language, or what's not, if you are struggling to keep up with it consistently, it might just be because you are overcomplicating things. Sounds familiar? I know that's me. I used to do that a lot and I still do that sometimes. And I definitely see a lot of my clients doing this, which is why I'm sharing this with you. Your spiritual practice is meant to serve you and to support you and to help you. It's not here to make life more difficult or more complicated than it already is. Your spiritual practice can be short and simple and clean. I'll give you a good example. So recently, I was on this um, vibe of wanting to wake up at 4 a.m. and doing this ambrosial hour, magical time between 4 to 7 a.m. and doing my ritual during that period. And it worked great. Like I woke up at 4 a.m. and I did like a 90 minutes ritual. And then that's how I did it for a good three months or so. And it was magical. It was exactly how I imagined it to be. And even more, it was powerful. It's great. Now, so at that time, what served me was doing it for 90 minutes. And it was great. There is a time and space when we need a longer ritual for whatever reason it is. However, after that three months, I kind of put a stop and went into this spiritual nesting or resting period. So I'm like going kind of slower on my body and all. And recently, I feel a calling again to wake up at 4 a.m. and to do ritual again. However, it's very clear to me the message this time around is, although I'm going to wake up at around the same time during ambrosial hour, it is not meant to be this gung ho style of complicated 90 minutes ritual. At this point of my life, what I need is something that is somewhat more simple. So this morning, I woke up at 5.30 a.m., doesn't have to be four, be flexible, it's still within the ambrosial hour. So waking up at 5.30 a.m. and I did a 30 minutes ritual of breath work, yoga, and meditation. In 30 minutes, I entered a state of bliss. My state just changed like instantly. And all it takes is 30 minutes. And I was like, oh my God, that's easy. That's really simple. I don't have to make it way complicated because prior to this, I already had a thought of wanting to resume this ritual waking up at four. But my body went like, mm, am I going to wake up at four and do a 90 minute ritual? Maybe not. It was kind of like having the thought of having to do a 90 minute ritual, just make it like, eh, maybe not. So of course, 90 minutes is an extreme, but you will have your version of extremity, whether it is one hour ritual or whatever the time period is for you. It's not about the time. It is whatever you think is overcomplicated. So when I had that thought of, oh, 4 a.m., 90 minutes, mm -mm -mm, no, 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 no. Which is why I wasn't be able to do it until recently when I feel a strong, strong calling to do it. And now it's easy. It's 30 minutes. And now it's not about saying whether 90 minutes or 30 minutes is better. It is understanding what you need. What does your mind, body, heart, and soul, and energy needs right now? There is time and space when an extended ritual is important and is powerful. There is time and space where a simple and short ritual is helpful and good enough. Let it be enough sometimes. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes more is more. And there is, of course, a beauty in having a ritual where, you know, you have a candle set up, an essential oil, and your crystal, your altar, and having those like beautiful ceremonial space. However, if that is too much work, you don't need that. A ritual is a ritual regardless of what it is. Don't let the thought of overthinking or overcomplicating stop you. And it often comes in one of these many forms. So one, it might be wanting to do it for a longer period of time than it is necessary or than what you actually can make time for at where you are. 
Second, to make the process more tedious, like setting up flowers, setting up candle and what's not, when all you need to do is get up and sit down and meditate. Third, it is just forcing yourself too much and beating yourself up over it because that is like chicken and egg. Like It's like you are beating yourself up and then you feel bad about not doing it and then you go through in this cycle and then you just end up not doing it. It's like, be kind and easy with yourself. Allow yourself to have the process as it is. You know, like if you miss a day, it's okay. Just show up again. There is no need to beat yourself up. Just be kind and easy and do your best again the next day. Your best today is different from your best tomorrow, but give your best at this moment in time. So with that being said, this is an invitation for you to probably just reflect a little bit on your current spiritual practice and look at whether there is anything you can do to change things up, to shake things up, or to even just simplify it. And just be conscious about what will actually support you more. If you are overextending your time when you don't really have the luxury of time, then it might be doing more harm than good. But similarly, if you actually are in so much energy deficit that you need to replenish your energy, then you probably really need to make time for it no matter what. So it's kind of using the analogy of food, right? So what you're doing with spiritual practice is like feeding your spirituality, like feeding your spirit and your soul and your heart or your mind the same way you are feeding your body with food. So when you're very hungry, you eat a lot. But when you're hungry, you eat a little bit. Make sense? So it's kind of the same. So when you're very hungry energetically or spiritually, then you do a little bit of longer ritual, a more extensive one. But if not so much, then you do a shorter one. Either way, remember your end goal. Your end goal is just to feed and nurture and nourish yourself. As long as you hit that goal, it doesn't really matter the how because my how and your how is different. Some people work well with short ritual. Some people work well with long ritual. Whatever that works for you, works for you. But what matters is for you to actually show up and do the work and really, really be consistent without beating yourself up in the process. With that, I end today's transmission and remember to click subscribe so that you'll be notified when I release new content and check out how we can deepen more in your healing journey in the description below. And I'll see you again 